All right, say something real quick. Something. Perfect. I got gotcha. you. Uh, you are. Let's see. Uh, you're called Noobster here on Discord, but you run a couple of channels on YouTube, don't you? Tell me about those. Yeah, I run two of them. So basically, I run Ruski Nine Thousand and Worldwide Nine Thousand. And Ruski Nine Thousand is my main channel, and Worldwide Nine Thousand is a dead channel. <laughs> I kind of left it for like. I think six months now, I haven't touched it. Well, I remember your, what was that? Was it T29 or something? You did some American Heavies video that I greatly enjoyed. Yeah, I did some some American Heavies on, well, it was fun. It's a really good lineup. Uh, so, you do a channel where you feature a lot of gameplay and no filler. There's just a whole bunch of action and things happening and a lot to learn from. And I looked at your description on YouTube and I thought that was a pretty good description of your channel. So, have I left anything out? Yeah, that's pretty much everything. Besides the... Are you talking about World Rider or Ruskinen? Well, tell me a little bit about both. Alright, so with Ruskinen 9000, my very first video was like pretty crappy you could say i think it was like a montage of jets or something like that and basically i came to the realization that i can't find any you know good compilation videos with like proper action and i decided to just take charge and make them myself and hope that everyone enjoys them along the way and hope that everyone can also learn at the same time from the things which i do how to play better and you know things like that you know, personally, I have learned quite a lot from your videos, and one of the things that I pay attention is to is how you set up the kill, uh, the spots you aim for, and also you have a few little tricks you do with hiding your weak spots that I found really interesting. And so I'm always excited to see what you come out with next. Uh, so that pretty well sums up your YouTube channels, and now we get into the really interesting part, which is talking about your life. So, you were born and then things happened. Tell me about yeah. that. All right. So, I was born in the UK. Obviously, I don't have a British accent, but I lived in the UK half my life. Then I moved to the Middle East for the other half of my life, which is why I don't have a uh, UK accent. And... Yeah, I have two smaller siblings, and what else you want to know? Oh, I want to know everything. <laughs> it's already interesting. Yeah. I, I don't think I've spoken with someone that grew up in the Mideast, so maybe you could tell me a little bit about being a, a child in the UK, and then some of your experiences first moving to the Mideast. All right, so... Since you want to know everything, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> I was born in the UK in a hospital called Victoria Hospital, which I can't visit anymore because they took it down and turned it into a hospital. So <laughs> I can't go back to the place I was born. I went to primary school and then I left when I was like eight-ish to the Middle East. And to some of the Middle East, it's literally on fire. It's burning hot. It goes up to like 50 degrees Celsius. And I went to, I continued my primary school there. Then I went to secondary school. Then I joined uni. I know that when you move even for the U.S., in terms of the U.S., just a few states over, uh, the culture is really different and you have to make all new friends. Um, did you have, what was it like adapting to... Uh, the culture of your new home in the Mideast, and uh, what was it like making new friends? All right, so I'd say first thing, moving from the UK to the Middle East, the first thing you notice is the temperature, obviously. And then, you know, settling to school, it's, it's kind of like you have to start all over again with, like, making friends and knowing your neighborhood and that kind of stuff. But the thing is, I never really stayed in one school when I was in the Middle East. I kind of moved over to like 
you need to make friends again. <laughs> so I had to make friends like four times when I was in the Middle East. So it's pretty confusing, but it's, like, it's nice to see new people every now and then. So, yeah. I, uh, I can relate to that. When I was young, my dad was in the army and we moved about every year. So there was like no point in making new friends because they'd just be gone next year anyway. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. I was always reading a book or playing a game or something, so I didn't care. But uh, that brings up, you obviously got into gaming. Are there other, what are some other games that you've played? Has, I don't suppose it's always been War Thunder for you. No, of course not. So I'm a really huge fan of Star Wars. So I play Star Wars Battlefront, the original, and Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original. Oh, man. Star Wars Battlefront 1, and Star Wars Battlefront 2, the new one, and Star Wars Public Commando. And I do kind of play like Battlef Battlefield Bad Company 2. I know it's like an old game, but, you know, I played when I was young, and it gives me nostalgia every now and then, so... I hop on to Bad Company 2 every now and then. I also play Forza Horizon 4. It's like really fun to race around and like big trucks and just, you know, beat people in big trucks and wow them. And I play State of Decay 2, which is a zombie game. So I think those are the only... Oh yeah, I play Armored 3 every now and then. That's about it. Okay, that's cool. I have a I have a friend who was a graphical artist on Forza Horizon 4, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's about all I know about that, but we used to we used to practice karate together. Anyway, um speaking of, uh let's talk about hobbies. Obviously, you play games, but are there other things that you're interested in? Um yeah, I do. I like drawing every now and then to just fill up my time and I enjoy swimming but I don't really play any other sports to you know have it as a hobby but yeah in general my only hobbies are swimming and drawing. Oh cool that sounds like uh, in my college days I did a lot of swimming and a lot of drawing and uh, I also got into martial arts but anyway those are those are good hobbies to get into. Both of those are, are healthy for your whole life. And swimming is really good for your whole body. So that's all interesting. Uh, you said that you lived in the Mideast. Tell me a bit about the area where you live and maybe uh, the town that you lived in and, and some of the things that you would notice around there. Is it good olive country or things like that? Yeah, so to be a little bit more specific, I lived in the UAE and specifically in Dubai. But whenever I tell people I live in Dubai, they assume I'm like a millionaire or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I'm just a normal person with a normal life. So that is a place that I know very little about. You know, all we see is like, you know, Dubai, and then it's the next James Bond movie, and they show you some skyscrapers and 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 some beautiful beaches or whatever. But uh, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what it's like from your perspective of Dubai and what it was like to to live in your neighborhood. So my neighborhood is like thirty five kilometers away from downtown, and. Basically, the way I see Dubai after living there for like half my life, it's basically desert and towers, <laughs> then more desert. So it's pretty nice actually because it raised me and it's kind of, you could say, where I'm from since I'm, I've spent half my life in Dubai and half my life in the UK. And hmm, what else could I say about it? It's definitely a very mixed culture. There's like people from all over the world there. So like, it's not just Arab. It's like people from Asia and people from the West and the North. It's a nice mix of people, to be honest. That's very interesting because I have some some friends who grew up in, oh geez, what's it called, Las Vegas, and it's really similar in that regard. It's out in the middle of the desert, and there's desert and then skyscrapers and then more desert 
and there's this huge you know there's this huge city around the place where everybody else goes where all the tourists are where the real locals live and it's a completely different situation and yet also Mm -hmm. there's there's all this mix of cultures and people from all over and uh Las Vegas specifically is is not a really great place to live. <laughs> but Dubai sounds like a very interesting place. Minus the heat, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh so let's see what else should we talk about? Oh, we haven't even I have well, I'm Casey by the way. I run the Toshio Thunder channel oh. and uh yeah. no, what's your what's your name, Noobster? So my actual name is Kareem and Hello? Yeah, I got you. So your name is Kareem? Yeah, with a K. Nice to meet you, Kareem. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm, that was so rude of me. I I got so interested in asking you questions about who you are that I forgot to ask your name. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't worry>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so excited to finally talk with you. This is great. So, yeah, same. Uh, Kareem, and uh, how old are you? I am. I just turned twenty-one actually last month. I'm getting old <laughs> really fast. I uh I understand. I am just about to turn 32. I think that I've been like accidentally telling people that I'm 32 cuz I just lose track of my age. <laughs> but uh trust me. If you feel old now, wait till you have kids. They will make you feel as old as the trees. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait. <laughs> And uh, speaking of, I guess, you mentioned that you have, what was it, two siblings? And um, any more about your family you'd like to share? Yeah, so I've got two smaller siblings, and we're all three years apart in age. And, you know, obviously being the eldest, you're responsible for a lot of things. Uh, What else would you like? Well, tell me a little about uh, mom and dad. Did you have any pets? Oh, pets. <laughs> That's a good one. So in Dubai, I had this, this cat, a female cat. Apparently, we found her on the street one day and she came towards us. And we found out like a few months later that she's actually from Denmark. So we assumed that someone abandoned her. So we obviously told the authorities and no one came back to pick her up so we decided to keep her and the thing is that we didn't keep her inside the house all the time because you know my parents aren't really fond of cats and you know how they shed fur all the time so because we kept her outside there are other male cats in the neighborhood and every three months they come to her and they reproduce with her and she made like 25 babies (laughs) She was busy. (laughs) Really busy. And we had to feed her throughout this whole time, which is, you know, fine. It's part of the responsibility. It's nice to have kittens as well. But, you know, (laughs) when you have 25, there's kind of like a limit. My goodness. She was starting a whole tribe of of Danish cats in (laughs) Dubai. It was literally a farm of cats. But the good thing, I guess, it's good and sad thing is that when they grow up, you know, male cats, they have their territory issues. So when kittens get older, they fight and they eventually leave. And then it's just the mother and the female. Or, you know, sometimes the few female moves out and finds a house. So, yeah, usually there's one kitten and the mother. And then it just, you know, cycles around. That is really interesting. And, of course, yeah. in that climate, that's really a perfect climate for cats because cats came from egypt anyway so that's just about right for them um i visited israel once for a few days and one of the things i noticed right away is all of the the i wouldn't call them wild cats but just like city cats they didn't really belong to any particular person 
but people would leave food out and uh, they were comfortable around people and they just had the whole city to themselves. <laughs> That's kind of cute. It's kind of, I guess you could say the same with us, except it's like there are cats everywhere in my neighborhood specifically. Because, you know, people are also leaving food outside the corners of the streets and, you know, since there's food, there's cats and you multiply and there's just more cats. <laughs> Hey, better to have lots of cats than lots of rats, right? <laughs> yeah, good point. Let's see. That's uh, that's pretty neat. I like that uh, you've experienced so many of these things that I happen to to have experienced similar things myself. We had a cat at our house that lived underneath our house. And she was a pretty neat cat, but I think she found food somewhere else, so she, she moved to another place. <laughs> um, um, you know, if you want, you can check out my cats on my Instagram if you want. It's literally not even my Instagram. It's just full of cats everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like uh, Dita. Dita has all kinds of pictures of his pets. Uh, if I did... Yeah, that's nice. I... I I barely have like I'm an old man, you know. Thirty two is too old to be to be picking up new technology, <laughs> and I already have like yeah. a Facebook and a YouTube, and that takes up way too much of my time anyway. But uh, maybe you could send me a few pictures of your cats for the video. Uh, I would really sure. like that. Yeah. So uh, that's neat. I loved I loved hearing Dita's stories about his his pets. Um, anyway, what's next? So you went to university. Tell me a little bit about what you studied and, uh, what are your plans for the future? All right. So right now I am studying BA architecture and I'm still doing my, I actually did first year and second year in the UAE, but I moved to the UK to continue my course, but unfortunately they don't accept direct third year entries. So I have to do second year again, then finish third year, then I get my degree, and hopefully I'll find a decent job. I don't exactly expect to become an architect because, you know, that kind of stuff needs experience and it's, you know, tough responsibility, but with time and experience, hopefully I'll get there. Well, that's interesting. So are you getting into 3D modeling at all? Yeah, I do lots of that stuff. It's kind of a pain, but it's fun. It's like fun pain. <laughs> it's hard to explain. <laughs> and we also do rendering, so if the end result is usually amazing, but the process is long. But that uh, that sounds really interesting. Have you gotten into any of the the things with War Thunder, like looking at resources from the game and and making custom camouflages, that kind of thing? Well, I've kind of considered making camouflages since, you know, almost all of my subscribers are asking where I get my skin, what skin is that? I'm, a, I'm like, no, it's not the skin, it's a decal. So I end up thinking to myself that I've got to learn how to make skins so I can give it to my fans. And I'm not really much of a coder kind of guy, so I don't really understand files and coding completely. But, you know, I find my way around slowly. I, uh, I've been doing custom camouflages longer than I've been doing YouTube. You know, not, not, really, uh, not really active, but any time that I have a vehicle I really like, I'll just take about an hour or two and make something simple for it. And it really is easy once you um, put just a little bit of practice. But you could watch a YouTube video on how to make a custom camo and you could make one in an hour or two. Yeah, it's, I it's, do that soon. Yeah, it's really not hard to learn. So that's exciting! Because now when you when you make some camo for your fans, you can be like, yeah, Toshio Thunder told me <laughs> it's not so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. That's really neat. Yeah. And I look forward to seeing where your skills go uh, with that because you're still young and you're you're learning all kinds of really interesting stuff that, I mean, if you get into 3D modeling, even if you don't end up you're designing the next skyscraper in Dubai, then uh, 
you'll definitely end up doing something very interesting. I'm looking forward to that. And so, you know, you mentioned a little bit about your plans for the future. You'd like to, you'd like to actually use your degree <laughs> after you, <laughs> after you finish it. Uh, but any other plans? Uh, would you like to move to another country again, or do you do you hope to spend the rest of your days in the what what was it? Um, <laughs> did you say was it? Why is my brain empty? Talk words. <laughs> so, yeah, I do kind of, at the moment, I kind of feel like I'm just going to settle in to London because I was born here and I was raised here first, so I might just settle down here. And also because life in Dubai is pretty expensive. You can't live there without a visa, which is pretty normal. But to have a visa, you need to have a job. And finding a job there is really tough. Like, if I told you how tough it was, you wouldn't believe me. So I just plan on settling down here and just living life and see how it goes. Well, that sounds interesting. And I'd like to... Oh, just... There's so many things I'd love to know. I'm one of those people that whenever I I see or talk to somebody from another country it's just really interesting to me uh, so hopefully that's interesting to other people as well and on that note um where do we go from here <laughs> i've asked a lot of the questions that i'm interested in uh, while we were talking was there something that you wanted to talk about or something that came up as an idea and you didn't get a chance to talk about it yet well i have kind of uh, it's not like me related, it's kind of like you related. I'd like to know like a bit about your kid. Uh, you were cutting in and out a little bit there, but you said you wanted to know some about my kids? Yeah, that would be nice. Well, I love talking about my kids, and I, uh, I put a lot of pictures and videos of them up on my discord <laughs> i don't have any pets but i really treasure my girls and uh i i really treasure my wife too but i'm not allowed to like share pictures of her because she's more shy <laughs> with the little ones uh That's the sweet. little ones i get to share their pictures and i have two girls i have a two-year-old who is very ambitious uh, she's very strong and tough and determined she has her own way of doing everything and she tries to find a better way than whatever i tell her to do <laughs> <laughs> and uh she's the one that uh, she's decided that diapers are not for nap time so as soon as <laughs> i put her in her bedroom she takes off her diaper and then you know there'll be like she'll pee the bed or she'll poop on the floor and she had she had, she oh <laughs> she pooped in the bed you know is what i gathered so i, I walk in <laughs> to check on her and she's standing you know outside of bed playing with something and i felt something squishy like uh like I, I don't know if you're familiar with goats but it was pretty much the consistency of a goat pellet so i knew what i'd stepped on and uh and I, I picked up there were a couple little pellets on the floor and i look in in her bed there was a few pieces and then also <laughs> there were there were some put into a little bowl that i'd given her oh some God. food in so she ate the food and she put the little pellets in the bowl and there were some also there was like a suction cup bowl that's meant to like suction onto a feeding tray and there was some like jammed up on the bottom of the suction cup and i'm just like oh you know luckily luckily it was like pellets so it wasn't too hard to clean up but that's sort of, this is one of the more rough, one of the more difficult phases <laughs> where she's just, she's just filthy with, she doesn't know what's dirty and what's clean, you know, yeah. and she's very curious and very, she comes up with her own ideas about things. And the, uh, the younger girl is just turned seven months old and she's growing really fast now. She just started crawling and I put her down. 
and she yells at me because she always wants me to hold her. She's completely the opposite from her sister because she's just obsessed with people. Um, <laughs> and you you might notice that, that I'm really interested in people too. I think that's where she gets that from. But uh, mm-hmm. she just she just it's like she looks at you and as long as your eyes are on her eyes, she's just full of joy. And as soon as you look away, she starts getting sad. <laughs> but then she'll just go explore. That's her thing right now. Is she just wants to see everything right now. So she's she's getting into things. And then the two-year-old is tall enough now that she's starting to like climb up on the table and come to me with like pens and papers and all kinds of fun things that she's not supposed to have. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So so I'm pretty busy with them. That's a it's a big part of my world. Uh yeah. and on that note, um do you plan to start a family of your own and have you uh have you do you have a crush on anyone? Do you have a girlfriend? Tell me about that. Well, the thing is that I don't really have any, I don't know what's the name for it, but any potential people at the moment. Because the thing is that I just moved to the UK, like, literally two, I literally moved in two weeks ago. So I haven't really moved into uni yet, so I don't know anyone there. But the thing is that, hmm. I guess eventually, of course, I'm going to get married and have kids. But at the moment, I'm just kind of, you know, winging it. Yeah, that makes sense. I was, I think, I think I was 23 before I met the woman who was going to be my wife. And I actually have a, a video where I talk about how I met her. But, uh, yeah, there's there's no rush and... The woman who will become your wife one day is out there somewhere, and neither of you knows uh, who she is yet. Yeah, just have to wait. That's right. Okay, so we talked about growing up a little bit. Uh, we talked some about your family and your your uh, your cat farm (laughs) and uh we talked some about university and your dreams for the future a little bit about living in dubai all those very interesting things and uh your position right now you're you're single and you're you're focusing on growing up yourself let's see what else should we talk about you know this kind of feels like you know when you're in class and you're listening to a presentation and you've got questions and then you don't write down those questions but in the end when the teacher asks you do you have any questions your mind kind of goes blank and you can't remember any questions (laughs) (laughs) I uh I teach um, I teach kids twice a week, and I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but the the great thing about about my kids in my class is that there's always one of them who asks, "Yeah, is the lesson done? <laughs> <laughs> can I go?" <laughs> <laughs> or I think with us it's more, "Can we play a game now?" So. There's, I, I know what game we both play, so maybe we could talk a little bit about War Thunder. Um, here's one. You've played a lot of vehicles on your channel, uh, but there is, is there one vehicle that's your favorite or that stands out from the rest? That's a good question. The thing is that I don't really have a favorite. I have like a bunch of them which are my favorite. So I guess I'll start with one of them you know the the is6 obviously it's like super easy to play and it gets you good points and scores sure it gets penned by heat i pass a lot but it's a fun tank to play around with so that's one of my favorite tanks next one would be i guess the t62 because it's kind of in between top tier and in between, you know, 6.7. It's like a mix of both. It's not OP, but it's not underpowered either. It's like, you know, 
a soldier tank if you would say that it's really fun it's tough to play in a way if you play it how i play it just like <laughs> rushing the point and rushing everyone and i also like the tv it's like it's basically a panther but i specifically like it on the russian team because it's it doesn't have those side skirts so it kind of looks lighter and it's it's really agile and the turret turns in like five seconds or something so it's really cool you want to know any other tanks outside the russian tree oh those all sound really interesting and it makes me once again wish that way back in the day i would have uh invested in the the what was it called thunder league uh dog tag seal but that's it's a long time ago tell me some more about some of the other vehicles that you like all right so from the american tech tree i love the m18 it's literally a go-kart with a gun you run around oh yeah catch you it's just pure fun <laughs> that thing is hilarious i love to play that thing whenever i'm bored i'm just like okay i want to have fun up into an m18 run around flank people capture points boom fun and then i guess the m103 is not fun but it's satisfying because that one 20 millimeter ap round when it just goes through it really goes through like it shreds everything inside it's really really fun that's why i made a video on it on worldwide 9000 for like a good 10 minutes so i kind of enjoyed playing it and also you know the i don't know what it's called i think it's the puma or the pack wagon 4 it's like a german car with a 75 millimeter you know it oh yes that's one of my favorites yeah it was an event vehicle that thing is really really fun like I'm trying at the moment, I'm making a video for it and like top tier and that thing works really well. It's really fun and it's just amazing. But the thing which kind of sucks is recently they changed the how driving feels in the game. So you can't really drift around as much as you could maybe two months ago or something. Yeah, it seems like they added a little bit of a almost like a buffer to where your inputs don't have as much effect as they used to have which helps yeah. for beginners to the the Sonda Kraftfahrzeug series with those eight wheels because they used to they used to wobble all over the place so at least they fixed that yeah, but that's true it yeah. also means that they're not quite so so deja vu as they used to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true before the updated it was like when you're driving 70 kilometers an hour in a, in a pack wagon, you can't really drive in a straight line as you wanted to, because if you just touch A or D a little bit, you're just going to go straight into a wall. <laughs> like, it's really tough to drive at 70, that thing. But they changed it so it's more controllable, but it's not, you know, doesn't feel as good as it used to. But it's a good change, and it works. So, hey, I shouldn't be complaining at the moment. Yeah, it's just not Forza Horizon 4 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, along those lines, is there is there a vehicle you would like to see added to the game? If you could have your dream? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I guess I would say either the m1a2 or the t90 because those things are really cool looking well that makes a lot of sense and i oh, completely i changed my mind <laughs> i changed my mind completely all right tell me I the really best one i really want <laughs> with like a 50 cal for anti-air or like rockets for anti-air just you know a humvee with rocket pods or machine guns that'll be driving around with like 120 zooming past everyone it's yes really fun yes and on top of that humvees look really cool so yeah i completely agree i'd like to see i'd like to see some jeeps with like recoilless rifles or bazookas on them <laughs> i'd like to see humvees the whole idea of just very light 
um, fighting vehicles, sort of the way the Italians get. But I mean, mm-hmm. a, a Humvee is a really good. I I really like the look of a Humvee, and I would love to drive one in War Thunder. I'd, I'd be totally fine with the fact that heavy machine guns could take me down, and hull break would definitely be a thing. I don't even care. <laughs> Give me a fifty cal and put it at eight point oh. I don't even care. It'd be so fun. <laughs> but uh, you know, you could get you could get like a tow or an I tow on one. It, it could be a really interesting vehicle. Uh, low yeah. profile, high mobility. And no armor is best armor. <laughs> but uh, you know, that, kind of, that kind of brings up the idea that if if War Thunder ever do add like a bunch of cars with guns on top, they should make like a game mode specifically made for like a bunch of cars just running around, just doing whatever they're doing, capturing zones or whatever. That would be really cool. I don't know if you're old enough to be familiar with this game but i'm sure there's other games like it there was a game called twisted metal that came out originally for the playstation and if gaijin could do a twisted metal type uh april fools event with like jeeps and light infantry fighting vehicles for the different nations in like an arena where they can go through like a, a barrel and you know like a big loop and and like crazy track and stuff and try and kill each other at the same time that would be so fun a death race event uh for <laughs> for april fools i think would be incredible yeah that would be really fun thing is that the war thunder engine is really suitable for that kind of stuff in, at least in my opinion maybe i might be wrong but i just think it's you know, suitable for that kind of fun stuff. Oh, and that, that game, Twisted Metal, I actually played it as a kid, but I didn't really play the full version because on my PS2, I had this DVD with, like, a bunch of games. Yes. Their games. And you could only play it for, like, a few minutes, <laughs> or you could only play a certain mm-hmm. level, and, like, I only remember Twisted Metal from that trailer CD thing and just, you know playing for like five or ten minutes and then it closes and you have to restart it and yeah oh man you are a legit gamer then i i remember (laughs) that very clearly well it's been really awesome talking with you Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to say before we wrap things up here uh no just in general it was really nice talking to you and to finally have this this interview it's been like two months we've been trying to do this yeah you uh you even moved to another continent to get a hold of me (laughs) so i appreciate i i appreciate it you know it's been really it's been i had a great time talking with you today kareem and i look forward to seeing more from you in the future yeah me too it was really nice talking with you and i've actually checked out your channel and I've seen some of your interviews with like Dita, for example, and they're really nice. It's a really nice thing you've got. I I honestly think that it's the the best thing on my channel. So I'm really glad that I was able to make another one of these happen with you today. All right, Kareem. Uh, say goodbye to everybody. All right, bye guys. Sorry, I'm not a Russian. Big heartbreak. <laughs> uh, and as for all of you. Hope you enjoyed this one. There's plenty more interviews for you to check out, and I look forward to making more in the future. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.